Hello friends and welcome to the first and probably last annual Garby Awards. Tonight we're taking a look at the most disappointing games of 2023 that I personally played for two hours or less. Listen, I'm not about to pay full price for these games. I kept it under the Steam refund limit, so uh, yeah, let's get in there. Oh, quick note before we get started. I know this video is late. It's, it's not 2023 anymore and a lot of people have already made this video better, but you know, I don't know. I'm a procrastinator and I was traveling for the holiday, so let's jump into it, huh? First up, let's start with some honorable mentions that didn't make the list. They're not in contention for the Garbies. I wanted to point out Redfall. Redfall had a very bad launch. It didn't have 60 frames per second. It was buggy. The AI sucked. But after playing it, it, it just wasn't in contention with these other games, really. And I, I played it for a little bit, and it's actually it's not that bad, especially when you've been playing some of the worst games of 2023. So it didn't make the list this year. Forspoken was also panned for its terrible dialogue. Um, did you not just see me take out that gnarly beast? Yes, that dialogue is very cringe, but you know, cringe dialogue by itself, just not enough to get you on the list. It's a very stacked year for terrible games, and Forspoken just didn't make the cut either. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see who did make the list. First up is a latecomer to the competition. We've got The Day Before. The Day Before was developed by Fantastic, or Fantastic. I don't really know how to pronounce this, and published by Mytona. The greedy little swine behind this game probably thought they could stay off this year's worst games list by sneaking in the release at the end of the year. Nope, I caught you like a naughty little goat that keeps getting out of its pen and eating all the daffodils. I almost didn't get a chance to play this one since the server shut down and it got delisted from Steam, which was of course followed by the developers changing their name in an attempt to pretend the whole thing never happened. But it did happen. I know because I bought it and I played it the day before it got delisted. See what I did there? I said the thing. For those of you who didn't follow the day before drama, the developer had been teasing this game for years, calling it an open world zombie survival MMO and showing off some really good looking footage. Over the years, people started to think that it was a scam and the game didn't really exist. But surprise, it did exist, eventually. Except it was an extraction shooter and not an MMO and not an open world. Also, it looked like a pile of dead rats and it played even worse. When the entire internet rightly called out the game for generally being trash, the studio shut down the servers and canceled support for the game. Since the game was online only, that meant people who had bought it could no longer play it, ever. Fortunately, Steam offered returns for this game, even if you played longer than the two hour return window they usually have. So there's kind of a happy ending. Speaking of Steam, let's check out some Steam reviews for the game. Dr. Compton says, turns out it's a real game, kinda wish it wasn't. Extra Chromey Homie says, this open world is smaller than a New York apartment, but with more rats. Dude in the Wasteland says, what a beautifully crafted refund simulator. And the game is every bit as awful as these reviewers are saying. Here's a look at the zombie AI. These guys are a real threat to the players. You can feel the tension. Here's a look at the jumping and mantling in the game. Just kidding, your character is never making it over anything waist high. Here's a look at the PvP combat, but I should mention the only way I was able to find anyone in this large empty hellhole was to wait by an extraction point after I'd gotten a message that the servers were shutting down. I assume that was the message that the servers were shutting down forever? All in all, I'm glad this infected cavity of a game got yanked out of the Steam store, and hopefully we never hear from the developer Fantastic again. Oh, and they're calling themselves eight points now. Maybe because they made a game that scores eight points out of a thousand. Boom, got them. Seriously, though, don't buy anything from eight points. Just don't. Next up, Skull Island Rise of Kong. This one was made by Iguanabe and published by Game Mill. It's currently priced at 40 bucks on Steam or just 10 extra smackers for the Colossal Edition. Ooh, even more to hate. This game looks like it was developed in 2017 to take advantage of the Kong Skull Island hype, but then they forgot to release it until someone found it under a couch in 2023. Wait a minute, I just realized that Horizon Zero Dawn came out in 2017, and it looks miles ahead of Skull Island, so that joke doesn't make any sense. Sorry about that. Let's read some reviews. The Random Crits Blues says, you know the game is a banger when the file is called monkey.exe and has stock Unreal image. That's true. The actual file of the game is called monkey.exe. I don't know why. <laughs> Ghost Nuts says, I will never be as brave as the people who thought this was acceptable enough to release. Jigsaw. Kazu Crash says, this game really rustles my jimmies. Your dad's side bitch says, this game is definitive proof that God doesn't exist. But enough reviews, you probably want to know how I feel after actually playing this beast. First, a bit of backstory. Kong Skull Island opens with you playing Kong's mom, who is worried about her son and husband who haven't made it back from their fishing trip. And in the opening, the narrator refers to these three as the Kong family, which is a little weird. 
Like, if Wednesday is in the Adams family, and her name is Wednesday Adams, and Kong is in the Kong family, does that make his full name Kong Kong? Also, how big is a Kong supposed to be anyway? Without any humans around for scale, all I have to go on is other monsters, which isn't helpful. I mean, I could look at the trees, but they make a fully grown Kong look about the size of, I don't know, Shaq. I mean, Shaq's big, but I don't think he's Kong big. Now let's talk about the combat, or should I say Kong bats? No, no, I shouldn't. Anyway, the combat is as flat and boring as it looks in the gameplay videos of people making fun of it. The only moderately interesting part was a mechanic that lets you throw enemies at other enemies, but it was so clunky to use that I abandoned even trying to do that after a few attempts. Getting back to the story, you don't stay Mama Kong for long because she and her husband are brutally murdered in front of Kong Kong. Then you see a cutscene of an adorable baby Kong who's not even one shack tall as he attempts to survive in the jungle. But you don't actually play as little Kong. The game just time jumps to when you're an adult. And that's about as far as I got because shortly after that, I experienced a game-breaking bug. See, I need to use my charged heavy attack to break these rocks, but my heavy attack no longer charges up. I tried on the controller, and I even tried switching to mouse and keyboard, but nothing happened. Attempting to quit and reload my save resulted in the game just showing a loading screen for 5 minutes, until I abandoned that too and force quit the game. Wow, a game-breaking bug in under one hour? Someone's going for a record. Looks like Kong Skull Island is a serious contender for this year's Garby. Our next contender for this year's Garby is none other than Lord of the Rings Gollum. This game was developed and published by Daedalic Entertainment and is currently an absolute steal at only 20 bucks on Steam. Sorry, quick editor's note, that $20 price I saw was actually a sale. It's back up to 50 now, so you missed the sale. You'll have to pay full price if you want this game, sorry. But wait, that's not all. There's also an emote pack for Gollum. That's right, this single player stealth game has emotes and you're gonna wanna shell out that extra cash so you don't miss out on emotes like this. Let's read some reviews, precious. MickPlays24 says, How come I can run Red Dead Redemption 2 on high settings, but not the sad Smeagol game? Don says, I overpaid, and notably, he's got a note that says product received for free next to his name, so that's not good. They takes it from us, precious. Trixie Hobbits has stole our money. Look, I can't do a Gollum impression. You get the point. It goes on like this. Andy Additional Anus says, this is how Suge Knight feels in prison. Well, the reviews are bad, but I played it myself, and let me tell you, they're all right. All the reviews are correct. Gollum is a bloated raccoon corpse of a game that has you taking control of Smeagol for some rousing fun as a methed out little string bean that spends a large chunk of the game talking to himself. The game opens with Gollum getting caught by a Nazgul because he was chasing a bug, and you are then transported to a slave camp, where you'll spend your Gollum days doing chores for the orcs. Now I realize this section was to help you get acquainted with the controls, but I couldn't help thinking to myself that I'd actually rather be doing real life chores than playing this game. I could be getting dishes done right now. And I actually think dishwashing would be more fun than playing this game. There was not one moment of actual excitement in the two hours I played. Some of the chores included getting chased by something called a borax, but they were so slow that at no point did I feel threatened. I had to gather up some numbers off dead people, but there's no threat in that section either, except for possibly falling in the lava, which it feels like you'd have to do intentionally, and which I wanted to do to end my suffering. And while you're doing all these mundane tasks, you just have to stare at these god-awful graphics that are barely better than Kong. Just barely! Yet another giant franchise that somehow managed to give the game rights to a developer that had no idea what they were doing. How does this keep happening? <sighs> and speaking of giant franchises that are handing out game rights all willy-nilly, we've got Walking Dead Destinies up next. It was developed by Flux Games and published by Game Mill Entertainment. It's currently available on Steam for a mere 40 bucks, and it is absolutely terrible. The cutscenes are atrocious and look like they were made by a bargain bin AI. The voice actors did not record enough lines for each action, so you end up hearing the same line over and over and over and over again. Get away from me! Get away from me! Get away from me! The zombie models are recycled over and over again. Just all in all, the whole thing looks like it was made by spending about 75 bucks on Fiverr. And my god, trying to aim a gun in this game is pure torture. Even after turning the sensitivity all the way down, shooting in this game still manages to give me that same feeling as trying to get a bag of stuck chips out of a broken vending machine. As of writing this video, the reviews on Steam are mixed, but I can only assume that the developer or publisher is paying reviewers to give it a thumbs up because there's no way this game deserves to be anything but overwhelmingly negative. Also, I think some people are just giving it a thumbs up ironically, which, look, it's funny, but please stop. 
please. You are confusing anyone that just looks at the overall review score. Lewis says, Microsoft PowerPoint cutscenes, accurate, I concur. 1989, Taylor's version says, better than the day before, not exactly high praise. Dyer says, this is a $5 mobile game from 2010, and once again, a thumbs up! Stop doing this! Slide says, Carl, make sure you refund in two hours or we don't get our money back. Once again, I jumped in there, made the sacrifice, and actually played this game for two hours or less. And one of the funniest things to me is the way the characters are trying to be stealthy, but also loudly grunt or exclaim something when they pick up an object. Got it. I also love the ability to hide in smoke clouds, just a random cloud of smoke that doesn't disperse and just chills on screen for no reason. I mean, I know zombie eyesight is bad, but come the fuck on, really? And the animations, look at this nonsense. This has to be worse than Gollum's animations. And that's saying a lot. Also, the music in this game will just randomly cut out for no reason. <laughs> I mean, the music wasn't great to begin with, but it, it does kind of pull you out of the game and ruin the mood when it just cuts out for no reason. The game also allows you to kite zombies around and clump them into massive hordes that clip through each other. And this would almost be cool if they gave you like a grenade or something to blow these guys up, but they don't. You can just roll right over them too, even when they're in this massive horde. It's just so dumb. It's an awful game. Like, I just want the company to come out and be like, surprise, we had three high school kids program this whole thing. Isn't it impressive? And then I'd be like, yeah, that's actually, that's really impressive that they did it. But then why are you charging full price for it? It just, don't buy the game. It doesn't make sense. Even if you're a Walking Dead fan, please just stay away from it stay away from the game and our final contestant for this year's garby avatar airbender the quest for balance this game was developed by bamtag games and published by surprise surprise game mill boy that's a name we've been seeing a lot today i wonder what that's about anyway quest for balance is yet another snooze fest terrible voice acting clunky combat really bad puzzles that suck it's just direct and the tutorials slow down the game so much it's insane here's a pop-up teaching us about fetching items fetching fucking <laughs> items the thing i was doing when the pop-up interrupted me did we really need a pop-up to tell me about this and the cutscenes when you trigger events is too long. Look at this nonsense. Mm. That could have been half a second of cutscene. Half a second. Everything about this game seems designed to put the player to sleep, and that includes the music. This game could possibly be used as a cure for insomnia, but don't buy it if you actually want to play a video game. And they are still, at the time of me recording this, charging $50 for this game. Let's read some reviews. Elden Lord Nikolai says, I am not your beta tester. This game doesn't even feel like it's in beta. It feels like a very early alpha. Lucky Rick says, my quest for a refund failed. Oh no, did you play more than two hours? 3.7 hours on record, what were you thinking? Sergeant America says, this is the modern day E.T. for the Atari. Ooh, deep cut. It's really hard to describe how bad the combat is to someone who hasn't played it. Targeting is a mess. You're trying to control three different characters. When you switch to a different one, AI takes over. Enemies just warp in out of nowhere, and then once they do warp in, some of them just stand there. They don't really do much. They'll occasionally turn and shoot at you. It really feels like they couldn't be bothered to animate the bigger enemies walking around or chasing you or anything like that. They're just like, nah, it'll just turn occasionally and maybe shoot a fireball at you. There's these really bad race sequences, like when you hop on this otter penguin, and it may look like you have full control, but it's really just you switch to the different lanes. It's like one of those endless runner games you might play on your phone. It really feels like this game was made for mobile and just ported to PC or something. I don't know if it's available on mobile. I didn't check, but that's how it feels. This section kind of reminded me of the penguin race in Mario 64, except the Mario 64 race was way more fun. And it came out a million years ago, literally a million. And that's it. That's all the contestants for this year's Garby. And now it is time to announce a winner, or should I say a loser? Uh, so drum roll, please. This year's winner is the day before. Yes, that's right. How can you compete with a game so bad it ceased to exist? At least those other games I mentioned are still playable, but the day before is no longer playable. It simply imploded like a poorly coded black hole. Let that be a lesson to all of us about getting hyped for a game based on early test footage that's very suspicious. And that's it. That's all for this video. If you think I missed a game, if you're like, hey, you forgot about this really bad game in 2023, leave it in the comments. I didn't play every game that was released in 2023, obviously, so I might have missed a few. I'd love to hear what your take is. And if you think I should do this next year, I really don't think I should. But if you think I should, leave it in the comments. Uh, leave a comment on what how you think I could improve this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.